Now we are going to our third presentation on, in this session. Uh, we have our friend and colleague from the editorial board, Nadica, will present. So, Nadica. Thank you. So, my name is Nadica Milkovic. I'm from University of Belgrade School of Electrical Engineering, and I've prepared a paper for principles for open hardware together with Anna Trishovic from the Institute for Quantitative Social Science from the Harvard University, and with Lee Morpeer from the Institution for Social and Policy Studies at Yale University. We examine fair principles for open hardware in terms of open science. So when we talk about open science, we um, all know that uh, it provides accessible publications, data, software, methods, and even physical samples to the general public, not just scientists. It enables research verification, reuse, and transparency, which is highly important. And by that, it enables trust what is in science. And we can even argue that open science practices reduce social inequality by enabling anyone to access scientific knowledge. In terms of software and hardware, they've been an integral part of the modern scientific process. And if you think about free software and open hardware and their definition, they come naturally and naturally follow the open science practices. Uh, however, um, disseminating open hardware still remains a challenge. Um, and partly the problem is in the fact that open hardware is modeled on the free and open source software or force, but the two are fairly different. When I say fairly different, I should probably tell you something more about open hardware and its components. This graph was inspired by the Open Source Hardware Association and their definition of open hardware. So if you take a look at this pyramid of open hardware, you will notice that it contains also open documentation. We need instructions on design or software, how to build hardware components. Then it has open physical design, which includes um, schematics in most cases, if we are talking about electronics, but also bills of materials. And then it comes to a very tight relation to open software, because, for example, for functioning of a device, you would need the firmware, uh, simulation, and some kind of analysis code. And that's where um, all comes most of the challenges of, in disseminating open hardware. It's in their complexity. We tried in our paper to evaluate some existing open hardware examples in science and to review currently current literature. And we noticed these four groups of challenges. So the first challenge is to choose an adequate license. Because, you know, open hardware can consist documentation, can consist of software, not just of schematics or physical design. So we've noticed that there are good examples for, from OSHVA, for example, which offers a separate licenses. One license for documentation, for example, Creative Commons, one for software, for example, GNU GPL, General Public License, and the third separate license for open hardware like CERN. Um, then there is another problem. Which platform should you use to disseminate your open hardware. We've noticed that there are some, I may say, bad practices like um, sharing open hardware and Google Drive or similar. And we believe that uh, some more dedicated platforms should be used. For example, um, specialized journals have more structure to offer for disseminating open hardware, but also there are Git-based platforms that, open, that offer more functionality. Then there is a third challenge in organizing, separating, and interlinking resources. We believe that digital identifiers, like persistent identifiers, DOI, for example, can help. But there is also um, a problem in this because in some cases, the researchers tend to um, gather together their software and hardware which are integral part of the device or physical design. And in that case, they use the same license. They use software license 
for both software and hardware. And in the end, providing detailed documentation and detailed metadata is crucial um, for open hardware to follow its basic principles to be reusable, modif modifiable and reproducible. So we need good practices and we need good templates. Um, to give you an example of um, widely adopted open hardware and widely successful projects, and not just successful in terms how common it is in um, education and in research, but um, it's, it has a great commercial success. Um, we found this uh, source where uh, Arduino has estimated revenue of uh, 56.8 million per year. So here on the right, you can see original Arduino board following this trademark Arduino and their logo. And on the left hand side, you can see a board um, designed according to the physical open physical um, design and open license, open hardware design in China produced and legally sold. Trademark, trademark is protected, so that's why you don't see it in, in this board here. So um, this, this is particularly really successful example of open hardware, but one should know that um, this um, uh, open hardware was developed in 2005, almost five to six years before all open hardware licenses even emerged. So why do we need good practices? For example, Arduino was shared when we haven't even had uh, open hardware licenses, but now life should be quite easier, right? Because good practices can ensure appropriate reusability, reproducibility, and they can provide us a path and lead us to wider adoption of open hardware. In terms of open science, they can lead to better science and ultimately to success, even commercial. So we elaborated and proposed fair principles as a solution to uh, open hardware challenges. Uh, for those of you who don't know, FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, and it's meant to be applied to all digital assets. FAIR core, core uh, idea of FAIR principles, which were published officially in scientific data in 2016, is to enhance and to provide the ability for machines to automatically find and use the data, but at the same time to provide, uh, to support reuse by humans. It's widely adopted uh, for scientific data and those of you who have experiences in Horizon 2020 project know how FAIR and data management are important. Currently, uh, FAIR principles are extensively being defined for research software and to the best of our knowledge, this is the very first attempt to define FAIR for open hardware. So I'm not going to go into detail um, in this uh, section. I would rather highlight some important aspects. For example, for F or findable in FAIR, we've noticed that it's quite important to um, use uh, assigned globally unique persistent identifier and OSHWE offers some identifiers which are not persistent, but also DOI can be used. Uh, and that metadata uh, should be used that described um, your open hardware. So following another principle, accessibility, we um, emphasize that open hardware files should be stored in a repository in infrastructure that can support long term term hardware stewardship. And if you take a look really shortly and maybe in detail in our paper, how is how are these principles defined for data or research software, you're going to see that in most cases we change the hardware as a word. For example, uh, for data, metadata are accessible even when data are no longer available. That the same applies for research software and we believe the same should apply for the hardware. When it comes to interoperability, um, we also added some flavor to this um, principle, fair principle, because we believe that if hardware uses formal, accessible, and broadly used language, it can foster and enable collaboration between academia in, and industry. And we also believe that complexity of hardware that I've shown to you in, in that pyramidal structure also comes 
from cross-referencing. So for example, you can have your open hardware, but you can, um, which is a device that you use the Arduino board to build it. So your open hardware already contains another open hardware. That's one level of complexity. The other level comes because your open hardware is tightly connected to its software, for example, firmware, and you need to have qualified references to that other object. And in the end, it comes for R in FAIR, for reproducible in FAIR principles, where I believe we introduce the most changes. So um, hardware should be richly defined and described. Uh, for example, uh, in comparison to data and software, you need to have assembly instructions or you need to have a bill of materials. And one principle that I found highly important and maybe the largest difference between data, software and hardware that we noticed is this R2 principle, because hardware should include qualified references to other hardware and available components. What do we mean by available components? In order to build Arduino board, you are going to need a microcontroller on a chip, you need a resistor, you need a capacitor, and you need actual components that you need to go to a store and buy. So someone has to give you instruction and those components needs to be available to you. So that's where complexity of hardware and the largest difference comes when we compare it to data and software. FAIR is mighty, but FAIR can't solve all the problems. We also recognize that there are beyond FAIR challenges. Some of them are already uh, recognized for the FOSS, and open hardware is also not exception. For example, there is a problem of maintainability, of version and uh, control and quality control and com computational efficacy. But also we recognize some differences in beyond fair challenges for open hardware. For example, schematics can be really complicated. It's not just a circuit diagram, you know, connectivity diagram. Schematics can be a design file and software, and they can even be a part of a simulation and they can even produce data. So that's where complexity comes from. And we also recognize that hardware should also include open hardware, some guidelines and industrial standards. Actually, currently in, in Germany, one of the standards have been uh, defined for open hardware. Um, we based our research and our paper on open science, but we must also state that there are uh, open hardware practitioners uh, can benefit from following fair principles because they can share open hardware smartly and adequately. Why? If you, for example, follow findable principle, then when someone, for example, uses um, Google and wants to find your open hardware, they're going to find it if you've shared it fair, smartly and you followed fair principles. If you share your open hardware on a Google Drive, or maybe some of your friends will know for that, but almost no one. So we want to stress out that fair principles outline good practice in science and beyond, although they can't solve all our issues and challenges. That's it. So I will ask for uh, questions from the audience or from remote questions. Perhaps I can start the excellent work. It's the obviously much needed uh, effort and uh, to make those principles not working only for the so software, free software, but also for open hardware. Obviously, there is a need and some specifics, not some, but many specifics, obviously. Uh, I'm just curious, but I believe that the same, you, you mentioned that is beyond the fair principles, you mentioned the versioning, and uh, that's something that come out to my mind now, I was never looking into the fair principles or anything like, I mean, uh, principles related to free software and open hardware, and how about the, we have a, let's say, open hardware, and uh, from one point that there can be a lot of uh, forking coming out from the same. It's not the versioning actually, but we have a lot of different uh, branches coming out from the one. So uh, is there any ideas how we could track that in question, for example, 
if they start for the same origin, then uh, the same bugs can exist or some same problems or something like that. Is, is there any solution either for software or hardware as, as far as you know? Well, currently, um, uh, what I know is that the Git-based platforms are really promising solution for such uh, complex dependencies, but they can't solve all the issues. And I have to uh, mention a disclaimer because Free Software Foundation usually criticizes Git, especially GitHub. <laughs> but I talk about Git-based platforms at large. They're used for versioning control and for handling such dependencies. Um, but the problem, for example, with persistent identifier uh, would be a question, uh, are you going to have one persistent identifier for all these dependencies or are they going to be separate? I think that, um, for example, solution that offers the Nodo repository, that you have uh, different dependencies, have their different DOIs, but they all have one common um, would, would be... Um, a solution, but currently, uh, though I mentioned that software is most mostly covered by fair principles, we, we still don't have, we have just attempts to define fair for software because obviously fair is not enough. And that's what your question is. It's it's really a complex um, thing to, to cover these areas. Thank you very much. Are there any questions more? Just a short one. Uh, are you sure that your original Arduino Uno is original? <laughs> yes, yes, because um, uh, there are uh, um, green boards from Italy, uh, but the trademark is not only held by the um, factory in Italy, actually there are three factories, one in the United States, one in China, uh, if I remember correctly, or and one in Italy, so they they come at some uh, differences. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.